Jason Smith Show. But joining us now is former NBA Rookie of the Year and also former NBA Most Valuable Player. And he's got a new book out right now that you can get on Amazon and other fine book retailers. I'll show you. Derek Rose joins us here on ESPN Radio and ESPN New. Yo, D. Rose, what's up, man? How you doing? Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks for having me on your platform. Hey, no problem, man. When I was told that you were putting a book out, Derek, I have to say my first uh, response was that I was surprised because you have been a very low-key guy your entire career, both professionally and personally. And to write a really compelling book, you have to be expressive and you have to share things you probably weren't comfortable sharing in the past. So what compelled you to write this particular book? You know, I wanted to tell my story in my own words. Um, in the past, I felt like I was too young. I wasn't mature at the time to actually tell the story that I, my story the way that I wanted to, or to combat the, the the criticism that I was getting at the time. Like I wasn't ready for that at the time. But now, um, now that I'm in year 12, and I see that I have a, a huge um, fan base, and they all just want the insight on. Um, things that I do on an everyday um, basis or whatever it is. Um, that's why one of the reasons I put out the documentary like a couple of months ago, right. and now um, I put out a book out of nowhere. It's something that I just wanted to add to my resume and my portfolio. You know, I've not read the entire book, Derek. I'll, I'll admit that, but I've read some snippets from it. And one of the things yes, I sir. noticed that, that you talked about is telling your own story, and you felt as if at times – the media, maybe especially the media in Chicago, wasn't not only telling your story, but also leading fans to believe a certain narrative about you that you felt was not true. Let me ask you this, though. How much do you think that had to do with the fact that you were pretty introverted introverted throughout your career and you didn't share a bunch of yourself with the media and fans and they were able to think about you however they wanted? No, that's true. But at the same time, I knew that I was going to have this day okay. or um, a day that I was going to be able to tell my story my way. And it ended up being 12 years later. Um, I, I think that I had time to really think about everything, reflect on just my life, the situations that I, were in, that I was in early on in my career and um, just learn from them. Like, I felt like I mended all the relationships that I had, like from Chicago. I'm able to, if I really wanted to, um, to go back there and work out there in their facility because they have the best facility in Chicago. Um, and New York, I still have a good uh, friendship with, a relationship with Steve Mills, my agent, and him talk down there all the time. Um, Cleveland, after they um, cut me, me and my friend was – in the gym that same night after they released me because the team was on the road and um, they were on the road for like five days. We were up there the four, um, four out of the five days until they came back. Then we moved to Cleveland State, and Kobe let us do that. So I felt like I did a great job with mending all those relationships, even um, through the ups and downs, and um, it got me to where I am right now. Derek Rose, former NBA Most Valuable Player, joining us here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Michael Lee's filling in for Stephen A. today. You you mentioned a couple teams there, Derek, where you got cut. And I mentioned yes. you were a three-time All-Star. You were MVP. You had the Bulls in the Eastern Conference Finals, a chance to go to the NBA Finals. You had the devastating injury. Yes. You had another knee injury. You've had four surgeries in a very short period of time, and you get cut by some teams. You were on the ascension, Derek, to be a Hall of Famer. I mean, that is not hyperbole. Yes. That is, And I'm sure you knew that as well. And all of a sudden, you have these yes. these injuries and these heartbreaks and, and these personal, uh, or I should say professional failures getting cut by these respective teams going through all of that Derek yes. what were those moments like for you and did some of those days become really dark um of course um I felt every emotion you could think of but um to talk on the hall of fame thing um I am a hall of famer and not in everybody's eyes but to the people that I grew up with mm-hmm. like I made it I executed I got to where I was at I've been having these same expectations I have now they were thrown on me in sixth grade I achieved all that I got through all that um imagine like being 12 or 13 and everywhere you go people are like putting like their burdens on you like man you're going to be the one to make it you know what you have like you're going to be the one shorty you the one you're like what like when I was younger I used to always like pray a lot because When people used to say things like that, I felt like they were jinxing me. And um, it was just a weird position to be in. And now looking back at it, 
I was just happy that I had the the, the mentors I had. Um, I was open and vulnerable enough to, to talk to people when it was uncomfortable, and um, I got through it. What did it take you to get to that point, Derek, that you were comfortable talking about things that previously made you uncomfortable to discuss? Um, I think my mom, like my mom, like being around her, uh, we tend to like, we're very independent. Mm -hmm. And when we have tough times or go through tough times, we, we shut everybody out and we, we feel like we could handle everything ourselves. And I think I got that, that from her where, um, during that time, it, I never worried about basketball. My problems were always like off the court, like with like friendships. Right. Like I had one of my friends tell me that he had to step away from me because of like the because we were in a hot seat at the time. And at the time I didn't feel I didn't or why are you stepping away now, but those were were the things I was worried about, not basketball. Derek Rose has a new book out called I'll Show You. You can get it on Amazon and other fine book retailers right now. Former MVP with the Bulls and played for several different teams uh, throughout his career, especially as of late. So what makes you still want to keep playing basketball, Derek, at this point? Yeah, you know, I had to change my perspective, um, perception. Like, uh, of course, I love the game uh, when you when you're in the game and you learn the business for someone like I, the way that I grew up. Uh, you learn the business side, and it, it it like draws you back a little bit because you start to see that you just see the business side of it. And um, my perspective had to change because I had to change from it had to go from me actually like purely just loving the game to understand the game to I I'm so solely only doing this for my kids. Mm -hmm. Like I like during the time that I was thinking about retiring. Um, I thought about my son and I thought about how he wouldn't be able to like come to the games before like to shoot around with me to work out with me before the games like I was taking that away from him and I was being selfish and I, I had to grow up basically and just stick it through what was rock bottom for you uh rock bottom yeah i would have to say like i said i've never worried about basketball it was always just friendships and um friendships and going through turmoil with um just being in chicago going places people talking there it, it was just a lot to go through in your hometown i'm gonna ask you a, a little perspective and advice for someone else um dwight howard just rejoined yes. the lakers for a second time and he recently said that he hit rock bottom and that changed his perspective on things and you know when you say that term it, it can mean so many different things for different people whether it's career-wise personal-wise what have you for yes for Derek uh for Derek Rose hitting rock bottom and continuing on in a pursuit of still playing basketball or being the sport for his family what advice would you give Dwight Howard who's now in a somewhat similar position trying to do the same thing basketball wise there in Los Angeles I will have to say um be patient how hard like, is that to do, though, Derek? How hard is it to be patient considering who you were or who you are? Pardon me. I'm saying everybody's different, though, to each his own. But I'm saying for for me, my advice to someone else, like, or I didn't know at the time that I was going through everything that my my biggest, like, blessing was my calmness. Like, I was, I always wonder, like, man, like, I, I'm in this profession I have to be an extrovert. I have to be social. I have to do all this stuff because this is required. I'm thinking this is what's required from me. Right. But little did I know is that, no, like, be who you are. You're quiet. I didn't know what introvert was until I was, like, in my 20s. Mm -hmm. This whole time, I didn't know I had to go back to my room and recharge. I'm thinking everybody had to do this or everybody's fatigued this way. It's little things that you know. So that's why I, that's why I say maturing. Like, I didn't know nothing about that uh, introvert, extrovert stuff. Like, little things like that helped me a long way to understand who I was as a person, as a man, and one as a black man. What did this book do for you in terms of writing it and be able to express yourself and get certain things out. What did this moment do for you? 
Uh, it was solely for my fans. You know, I I have a huge fan base. Yeah, you do. Everywhere I go, I have people that relate to me or just get a feeling or a vibe from me from some way, somehow. And I never opened up to anyone like the way that I did um, or like I'm doing right now. And um, this is just a, a little insight on who I am as a person. Uh, I feel like I'm a very co complex person. You could put everything in a book, but I wanted to give you a visual. That's why I put out the documentary. I'm giving you a book so you'll be able to read it, and you never know what the future may hold because I have a lot of content. Derek Rose, the name of the book is I'll Show You. He has a documentary called Pooh, which people in the neighborhood, that's what they've called him since he was a kid. You can go to Amazon right now and pick it up and also uh, some other fine retailers around the country. I'll Show You by Derek Rose. Derek, appreciate the time. Thanks for hanging out with us on the Stephen A. Smith Show, and uh, best of luck next, next season. Thanks for having, having me on your, on your platform. All right, brother. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Stephen A. Smith.